Hi, we are Sorted. And we've been eating and travelling together for well over eight years. And we reckon we've worked out a formula or a set of rules to help us uncover unique, incredible experiences that aren't just at the top of a web search. We have 48 hours in Puerto Rico, so we need to make it count. And to make things interesting, at the end of our trip, Jamie and Baz will go up against Ben in a Beat the Chef Puerto Rican cooking challenge. So we need to learn as much as possible about Puerto Rican food and culture beforehand. And we'll be using our lost and hungry rules along the way to try and find those experiences we'll remember forever. Shall I do the honours? Yeah. I love this bit. Jay and I started the day talking to locals and it turns out Puerto Ricans are really friendly. Small places like these, I would say King Street and Club. From the tornado with the really sweet, really smooth cream cheese in the middle. Two different quesitos, one with guava in, which is this amazing sweet fruit, but it's almost like a like a jam or a jelly. Every single one of them is absolutely sensational. So let's explain about this here. In order to help us research, we'd compiled a list of suggestions some of you said we had to try in Puerto Rico, and then obviously we made it competitive. Mike and I on one team, Baz and Jay on the other. One point for each item. So Jay and Baz had three already. Are you doing anything for the rest of today? Because you can come with us. As we explored the area, each colourful cobbled street had yet another surprise at the end. This is the Path of Umbrellas, or if you're in Puerto Rico, Paseo de Sombría. Sure. Yes! Meanwhile, I decided to book Evers on a tour of San Juan with a difference. <laughs> oh, wait a minute! Not seen Wallace and Gromit. The build up to that I thought was the coolest thing ever. song in the popular culture, Des, Despaci, Des, Despacito. Despacito. Oh, you're ridiculous. That. Your theme tune's worse than mine. <laughs> As we stopped to admire the view, our guide Caesar told us why food was so important to Puerto Ricans. Food gives us our cultural identity. So we got uh, some influences from African cultures here, some influences from uh, old colonial Spanish uh, Americans, also our Taino heritage. So you mix that all out, you have this original heritage as well. So it became the Puerto Rican heritage. So while Ben and Mike were busy not getting any points, Baz and I were already at another of Maritza and Kat's recommendations. Don't get avocados ice at home. That is so creamy. Oh, this is why you follow recommendations. I know it's not Harry's birthday, but could we buy him a present? The next place we're going to is called Choco Bar. Massive recommendation from you guys because they put chocolate in dishes where you wouldn't usually expect to find chocolate. Oh, this is hurting my head, Baz. But how about a grilled cheese sandwich? with chocolate butter. Was that actually nice? That was actually really nice. It had a really interesting flavour to it. I don't know if I should like this, but I do. We're at Raices. That is how you pronounce it, because I just asked that man over there. <laughs> um, they have apparently the most amazing, biggest pork chop you've ever seen in your life. Apparently a really traditional Puerto Rican dish. I don't, I don't know where to start. It's full-on pork flavour. There is nothing else going on. There's no spices or anything like that. And that is full-on pork. I get it. I get why this is famous. But was it Mofongo famous? So, what do you want? Shrimp? Chicken? Shrimp. <laughs> Look at that. This is so, I'm so happy. Food is colourful as the city we're in. It looks and smells amazing. So we obviously got the mofongo and we went for shrimp. It looks like a cross between like a steamed dough and mashed potato. Oh, it's delicious. So it's garlicky, isn't it? creamy and garlicky. Look at the size of the shrimp. Incredible. And it's like nothing I've 
eaten texture-wise ever. Our waiter has just given us a mofongo masterclass. The one we've got here is classic mofongo. Fried plantains, garlic, butter, mushed together. That's it. I can literally smell the garlic on you now. Oh. After that, fried plantains or tostones, bam! Surrealitos, bam! Well, we also ordered Puerto Rican rice, bam! Bam! <laughs> <laughs> the flavour's a bit like a kind of Spanish rice. It's like it takes on all of the flavour that you cook it in. And an empanada, a canica. This is the easiest way of getting points ever. Right. Successful morning. But would our success continue into the next task, which was to win at lunch? So we've met back up with the other guys at Lot 23, which is a really cool street food market. And seeing as there's so many options for what to eat, we're going to get a little bit competitive. Hello! Bads versus Ben, street food market face-off. Person to buy the best food wins. Tres, dos, uno, vamos! Andale, andale. I wanted something authentic, something new, and knowing Jamie's appetite, something big. Croqueteria, a selection of six different croquettes, each with a different sauce. All we have to do is decipher the Spanish. Whereas I played to another Jamie's loves, meat. And having experienced how good the pork was in Puerto Rico, I went for a national speciality, a slow cooked pear nil sandwich. So we, we specialize in Puerto Rican style pork shoulder. Uh, we take uh, pork shoulder picnics, rub it, and then roast it for, you know, the total process ends up being like 10 hours. Uh, so once we've roasted it, we take it apart and put it in sandwiches with a little bit of the crispy skin. It's pretty simple, but pretty yummy. Very uh, classic Puerto Rican flavor. Baz, have you just brought one thing to the table? Yeah, Baz, I've been here once before. This one is gonna be easy. And who better to judge this momentous occasion than the king of lunch himself? Okay, my choice is, well, I went to the Croqueteria and I chose six of their finest croquettes. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Bang. This is a pan meal sandwich, a pulled pork sandwich. You've got some juicy pulled pork and crispy pork, cilantro, carrots, radishes, plantain. It's got the lot and you don't stand a chance. You realise we've already had four meals today. None of them have been lunch. <laughs> That's a mighty fine sandwich. There's so many different elements to that sandwich. Whoa. I've never had crispy plantain in a sandwich before. And now I think cheese and pickle will never be the same again. Everything makes a sandwich but you could quite happily just eat that pork because it has got so many levels of spice and herb just in that alone. I'm going to go with this one. Okay. Spinach! That is an overwhelming taste of spinach. I want to dip my life in that parmesan dip. We've got to try another one. So this is suckling pig. Ahili mohili. Uh, we'll put it on screen. That's special. I've got to make a decision. You there? I think I'm there. My winner has taken something that I absolutely love to a completely different place, to a whole new level, using local flavours, local ingredients, local techniques to make something so, so special that I couldn't have got it anywhere else. My winner today is Barry. Well, it's not Barry, it's the person that made Barry. that sandwich. I'm taking it. I'm, no, taking, no, it. No, I'm taking the it's, win, it's, I don't it's, care. It's, it's, as much as I'm a fan of the croquette roulette sandwich, fair play. And with that, we split off again for more food, learning and points. Ebbs and I had an ice cream first, and I let him choose because he lost the challenge, and I'm a lovely friend. Mike, do you want queso guava or guanabana? I had no idea what either of those were. You choose, I'll have the other one. Oh, so good. So here's the first, Mavi, a kind of fermented drink made from tree bark, sugar and ginger. It's super traditional all around the Caribbean and here in particular and, well, first sip. The warmth from ginger but no heat, brown sugar treacly sweetness, but then that kind of savoury, almost cinnamony, botanically flavour of tree bark. Also, I've nailed this now, You mate. can have the rest of it because it's <laughs> slightly boozy and I'm driving. <laughs> We've come to a rainforest. I forgot we did this. <laughs>
I haven't, I'm still recovering. <laughs> it's not a cafe, it's an actual real <laughs> rainforest. I'm the only rainforest in the US National Forest Parks um, scheme. Earlier in the day, Kat had told us about a trail she does with her friends, which wasn't on one of the tourist routes. And it was a lot better. And it wasn't just the gems that were hidden. Your outfit choice today is perfect. Wait, 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 wait. I'm still here. <laughs> so this is the trail that we were recommended to come up to. We're going to the top of Mount Britain. It's really, really soggy. My shirt is soaking and my avocados are wet. What? My sh avocados on my shirt, not my. Hello, sunshine. Hello, blue skies. Hello. While Barry and Jamie have their own tropical trek in the rainforest, Mike and I thought we'd have our own tropical adventure too. Dos pina colada, por favor. Cheers. Cheers. I'm with Evers, so obviously there's a historical reason why we're here also. This is the birthplace of the Pina Colada. Now there are many places in Puerto Rico that claim to have invented the Pina Colada, but none of them have a plaque. So we're going with this place. Can we have the same again, please? You see it? Wait, do we need to see one of those Instagram posts? Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah! That's wow, epic. that looks amazing. It's unbelievable. But I'm worried that the camera doesn't show it off well enough. See the east coast of Puerto Rico over there. We are in, we're in a cloud. Um, and actually, I think made better by the fact that we have to work for it. I hadn't really appreciated how just epically beautiful this place was. I know. But like you think about all the people we've met, how generous they've been with their time, the love that they have for this island, yeah. all the food that we've had, and we've managed to do this. Something we'd all noticed throughout the day was the presence of music everywhere. And we had one absolute gem of a recommendation left to check out that night. <laughs> I feel like this is an absolute hidden gem. Everyone is, everyone is here. Let's just get started. Does anything beat live music? And Casey Deer and Rob, I mean. I think this proves rule one. How would we have found this place without a local recommendation? Never, because there's literally nothing else around. I love a formula and I think it's working. <laughs> our main rule is that we couldn't go anywhere without a recommendation. George Rico, really easy, because people just volunteer recommendations without even asking. Yeah, so friendly. Start to finish, I just really feel like that whole day contained everything that I would want from a, a trip. Like, if you could condense a whole trip into 24 hours, that was it for me. Yeah.